Hey guys, Audrey Wise with Journey Realty Group here in Arden, North Carolina, and this is video four in my due diligence video series. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about some things that you might want to look into during your due diligence process. So this video in particular is going to relate to if you are purchasing a single family home, and I would definitely recommend doing a simple home inspection first and quickly because the home inspector is going to investigate everything from your electrical system to your foundation and your crawl space to making sure your appliances work. They're going to look at the roof. They're going to look in the attic. They're going to open the doors. They're going to, they're going to thoroughly look at everything. And if they find any issues with any of that, they're going to make a note of it. They're going to do a big inspection report and they're going to give that report to you. Sometimes what they find may require another expert to come out and do a further inspection. For instance, if they find a problem with the roof, um, the home inspector is going to say, hey, there's a problem with a roof and you're going to need a roofing contractor to come out here and take a look at that. So the reason you want to schedule your home inspection early in the process is because if you do need other inspectors to come out, you've got to allow time for them to get there too. So the home inspection is the first thing I would recommend. If you want a home inspection and a pest inspection and a radon inspection, sometimes the home inspectors will do all of that for you for a bundle price. And you might be able to save 50 or hundred dollars by doing them all at the same time. Other inspections that you may want to consider, and two of them I just mentioned, is a pest inspection for termites and any other kind of pests. Sometimes people have squirrels in the attic. I've seen bats in the attic. You may want to have a radon inspection done. I'll do a different video on radon another time, but basically it's a gas and one house may not have any and the house right next door to it may have enough that's dangerous and they need a mitigation system. So I always recommend that people do have a radon inspection done unless one's been done previously or unless they already have a radon mitigation system. Another good thing for you to do while you're investigating this property is to go and talk to the neighbors, meet them, see what they think about the area. They're gonna know things that either the seller may not tell you or that the seller may not know, but it's a good idea to go and talk to the neighbors. Also, it's a good idea to visit the property at different times of day. You might want to go in the morning and see what the traffic is like. If you have to go a certain way to work, you may want to drive that commute, see what that's like and make sure it takes you the length of time you think it's going to take. You can also check around online for crime stats. You can check for sex offenders in the area. You want to investigate the schools if you have kids. Google the address and do a satellite view of the surrounding property. Sometimes when you Google things you can and see the satellite view, you will see things that you can't necessarily see just driving up to the property. You can research homeowner's insurance during this time and figure out which company is going to work best for you. You're going to want to get started on your loan paperwork right away if you haven't already done so, because with most lenders it's going to take them 30 to 45 days if you're doing a typical conventional loan. So I would suggest getting started on that right away as well. If you're purchasing a home in a neighborhood that has an HOA or covenants and restrictions and bylaws and that kind of thing, you're going to want to read through those and make sure you're agreeable to all of their rules and regulations. If you have pets or any kind of animals, you're going to want to make sure that the HOA allows for those pets. I have seen sometimes where neighborhoods will not allow certain types of dogs. So you want to make sure that if you have that type of dog, that it's allowed in that neighborhood. And last but not least, make sure that you review the paperwork that was given to you by the seller or by your realtor at the time of the signing of the contract. The seller would have filled out a piece of paper called the residential property disclosure in which they disclose everything about the property that they know of that needs repairs. Um, there will be things in there like how old the roof is, how old the HVAC is, if they know of any foundational problems, what kind of pipes the home has. Just review those documents and make sure that you know exactly what you're buying and just make sure those things check out when you look at the property and when your inspectors look at the property. Those are just a few things that you can do during your due diligence process to investigate the property. I'm sure you may think of some additional things to do as well. I hope these videos on due diligence have helped you understand what it is and how it works a little bit better. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.